the name of our Lord and we give him praise for yet another day's journey that he has given us, that he has allowed us to assemble together in the house one more time. Yeah, Lord. We give him glory, we give him honor, and we give him praise. Yeah. For he is worthy of all of our praise. And worthy. I've said it many, many times before, I am convinced that we can never praise him enough for all that he's done for us. And every day that we are able to come in, we should enter his gates with thanksgiving yeah, and enter his courts with praise. Yeah. For this is the day that he has made. And he has done all the yeah. And he keeps on doing great things over and over again. I love the Lord because he first loved me. Yes, sir. And he demonstrated his love by allowing his son to die on the cross. I might be free from my sin have a relationship with them. We bless them. We give them praise.
praise him. He is worthy. Father God, we 
permission to put it to you, so yes. Father God, we thank you for his family right now, God. We thank you, God, for this church, for yes. each auditory of God. Father God, the members of the surrounding communities, God. Somewhere, somebody is standing in the need of a church. Yes. God, I want your Holy Spirit of God to just move huh? right now. God. Yeah. Keep it only you can keep on. Keep and there's no one that you can. Yeah. Oh God, right now, in the name of Jesus. Yeah. We love you, God. Yeah. But God, we know you love us most, God. Because yeah. you gave your only begotten son. You allow him to come down and to be beaten, to be starved, oh God. To be rooted to you, oh God. For our old sins of yeah. that we would have a right to the truth of life. And we thank you right now in the name of Jesus. Oh God, when we can't call on your name no more, God. Jesus. Oh God, when we can't just have a place to rest our heads of God. We pray, God, that you will help us and you keep us out of the
and, and what the church ought to be about. Yeah. I believe some of us might be ready to do some new things. Amen, somebody. That's right. That's right. I, I believe some of us might be ready to take it to the streets. Yeah. That's right. As Jesus did. Yeah. He spent more time outside than he spent in the temple. Yeah. Right. He spent more time traveling on and going to places where the church folks say he shouldn't be. Yeah. Look at him up in that tax collector's house. Throw him in. Throw him in. Going to such a place. <laughs> Just like some of y'all would say about looking at certain people's house. Look at that. He must not know where people live. Who knows? <laughs> That's where I need to be. Need to be. Yes, sir. Amen. Yeah. I'm going to be right up in there. Yeah, no. Because the message that, that's coming to David is that God is able to keep you. Come on, somebody. Yeah, no. And I said to the men, I said to them, I'm going to go to the whole lot of time. I said to them, we're talking about something, we're talking about weapons and all that kind of stuff. And, and I will share with them that I'm crazy enough to trust God. Amen. And I believe that if He allows something that happened to me, there's a purpose in what he allowed. That's right, that's right. If it's not in God's plan or will for me, it ain't going to happen. That's why I go any place I want to go and not be overly concerned. Now, the human nature going to have some concern. <laughs> that's right. Amen. I ain't out of the flesh yet. You know, the flesh of the person will have some fear and some concern. Yeah. I'm talking about it's getting up to die. All of us have some fears and some concern. In fact, it is fear sometimes to help us be prudent. Well, did y'all just hear what I said? Well, I'm preaching already. It's, it's fear That's right. that helps us to be prudent. That's right. That's, right. That's right. It's fear that makes us say, you know what, you, maybe I'll think about that again. Hey, Amen. Yeah. Yeah. The only time it becomes bad is when you let it make you so afraid that you won't live. You stay in your house all the time. Every visit next day. Uh, when we started out two years ago, March 2020, 2020 vision. I got it. Yeah. COVID came and took the vision. Yeah. COVID came and blinded some folk. Amen. That's right. And I made a promise. You know, that was March. We, we kind of shut down indoor worship. And we started worshiping across the street, and I had a whole stand built so we can do the worship outside. But it was in August of 2020. We started coming back in the house. Yeah. And, and I said at that time that I'm never going to judge anybody's faith, whether right? you want to come inside or not. I'm not going to judge you now, but y'all, it's time to come back inside. Yeah. 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 It's just time to come back inside. And this pastor. This pastor is trying diligently to meet everybody's need. Yeah, yeah. By still conducting two services. I saw uh -huh. the February, now we the March, we're still trying to do it. Because I don't want anyone to think that we are concerned about those who can't come at 8 30. And the truth of the matter is, y'all, the truth of the matter is, we are still, we are still exercising COVID conditions. Yeah. We are still maintaining those safe distance that we're supposed to. That's right. We're not trying to pack the church yet in one service. Amen, somebody. Amen. So we provide two services, 8.30 and 11 o'clock. 8.30 and 11 o'clock. Now, the 11 o'clock's a concern. If, you, if your concern is that we didn't sanitize between services and sanitize before, I will personally grab a can of, uh, of my song. <laughs> and when anybody here after Sunday school, I will walk down the aisle and spray every single seat so you can come in at 11 o'clock and not worry about it. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll spray. My daddy taught me to work. I want to ask you to do what I want to do myself. In fact, yeah, what y'all didn't know that I said, y'all, when y'all were in there, because I didn't mean I showed up, y'all were conducting that, um, that uh, uh, meeting about the um, money. <laughs> When, when all y'all were there that day, I came up there and, and I didn't know y'all had a meeting. Well, I don't know how to get in there. The audit team. When I came in there for the day, because we were doing something that evening or something, 
Oh, I know that that came in as great seats. That's what came out here for. When I discover your wife, I thought, oh, Gene, I thought you were going to have me to get rid of me. Because yeah. <laughs> nobody told me about the audience. I, I, I was going to come quit the church. I was around the church. I was like, all oh, these thoughts I know. Oh, I must be on my way to come on.
we got power. Yeah. Nine dollars can't do anything. Yeah, Lord.
who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you, yet who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we magnify you, lift you up, we give you praise, and we give you glory. We give you honor and we thank you for this moment. Yes, Lord. We stand to present your word to your people. We pray, dear God, that your word will go forth and not return unto you, Lord, to yes. accomplish what you sent it to accomplish. God, we pray that we break yokes, set captive free, yes. lift heavy burdens. Cause a rejoicing in the hearts of those who love you. Yes. God, we give you praise now for that one who's being saved. Yes. In this day. We thank you, God, for snatching them out of Satan's hand. Bring them into fellowship. Jesus. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Kept by the power of God. 2 Timothy 1.12 says, For this reason I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, mm -hmm. I am not ashamed. Okay. For I know whom I have believed and persuaded that he is able to keep. Somebody say keep. Gee. He's able to keep what I have committed to yeah. him until that day. Mm -hmm. He's able to keep what I have committed to him until that day. Yeah. Paul speaks to Timothy and Paul is saying, I'm going through some things. All right. He said, but I'm not ashamed of the suffering. Uh -huh. I'm not ashamed of the things that I'm going through. I'm not ashamed of these things because I know and I yeah. am persuaded that the God that I serve, that the God that I love, that the Jesus that I worship is able to keep what I have committed unto him yeah. until that day. Yeah. Yeah. Until that final day. To be kept, to be kept. Uh, Webster says to be kept is to retain in one's possession of power. We be retained in God's power. To refrain from granting, giving our allowance, to have control. When we are kept by God, we allow Him to have control in our life. Because you understand that, as we said earlier, the spirit and the flesh, amen, war against one another. The, spirit, the flesh wants the things of the world while the spirit wants the things of God. And, and the way that we are able to overcome our flesh desire is the fact that we are kept by the power of God. Come on, somebody. Because God preserves us. That's another part of the definition of kept to preserve, yeah. to maintain, to support. All these things, reps to say, is a part of being kept. And I'm here to tell you today that God is able to preserve us. That God is able to maintain us. That God is able to support us. All these things that is given as a definition, amen, of the word kept. Amen. And we have to understand that there is a God who is able to hold us and keep us in whatever we have to go through. Yeah, things won't always be good. We're not going to have sunshine every day. Yeah. What we need to understand is that along this journey called life, you're going to go through some stuff. Yeah. You're going to have some heartache. I said to someone not long ago, I'm not looking for it anymore. I don't, I don't look for pain and suffering. Yeah. Amen. I, 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 I don't adhere to the fact that the more I suffer, the holier I am. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I want y'all to understand T.A. Lance ain't trying to suffer. But I understand that as a part of the journey called life, we are going to go through some stuff. As a part of the journey called life, because not only do we have an advocate in Christ Jesus, we have an adversary whose mission is to trip you up. Yeah. Amen. Amen, somebody. Amen. Whose mission is to mess with your mind. Yeah. Whose mission is to cause confusion so that we don't come to
to that unity I was talking about earlier. That's his job. But if we surrender our will to the will of God, God is able to keep whatever we commit to. Ah, uh, think about old Jacob. Jacob. Jacob's name was supplanter. Amen. The word Jacob means supplanter. The name means supplanter, deceitful. And, and his mama gave him that name. And, and, and the Latin says it also means to trip up or cause a stumble. So here is Jacob and Esau, and Jacob's name is such that it may cause you to stumble. Come on, somebody. He's in Genesis 27, 36. Esau said this about his brother. Is he not rightly named Jacob? For he has supplanted me. Somebody say supplanted. He had supplanted me these two times. What two times? He Esau said he took away my birthright. And now look, he has taken away my blessing. Here is Jacob. Jacob stole his brother's uh, birthright. Amen, somebody. Stole his brother. The brother was hungry. Jacob said, well, I'll tell you what. If you want something to eat, give me your birthright. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And then, if that wasn't enough, he and his mama got together. Mama. He and his mama got together. And somebody said, mama boy. He and his mama got together. I want to trick the day. Amen. To give him that night. Now, here is Jacob. Jacob, a scoundrel, amen, doing all this stuff. But then he runs away from his brother. And on his way, I'm not making a point here about him. On his way, nighttime came. Yeah, that's right. And he lay down to sleep at night. And that's when he had that great dream about a lad going from earth to heaven. Angels descending and coming up and down. And he heard a word from the Lord that said, Guess what, Jacob? I'm going to bless you. Jabez means cause pain. And, and his mother named him Jabez because 
he caused her some pain. Now watch Jabez's prayer. Y'all remember it in First Chronicles chapter 4, verse number 10. Amen. In verse of 4, 9, in form of the Jabez's mother called him that because he caused pain. But in 4, 10, he said, Jabez spoke to God and said, oh, God. Oh, that you would do what? That you bless me indeed. Enlarge my territory. That your hand would be with me. That you would keep me. Somebody said, keep me. Notice that Jacob said, Lord, if you keep me along the way. Notice that Jabez came along and said the same thing. Said, Lord, if you keep me from evil, that I may not cause pain. So God granted him what he requested. He was blessed because he asked God to keep him. Let me tell you this morning, you are kept by the power of God. As you begin to go on this journey, you ought to have a conversation with God and say, oh God, if you keep me, I'll be all right. If you keep me, God, I understand that no hurt, harm, or danger can come unto me. If you keep me, God, I know that everything is going to be all right. What you need to understand is that we are kept by the power of God.
can do to me. Because they can't touch me when I'm kept by the power of God. You remember Job? What said he said about it? Well, God, he prays you and bless you because you got a hedge around you. God's got a hedge around you also. God's got a hedge of protection around you. The spirit is contrary to the flesh. That's right. 
the flesh contrary to the spirit. Spirit wants to think God's flesh wants things of the world. Yeah. It doesn't change them. Wait a minute, Pastor. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. It so is. Yeah. <laughs> it so is. But let me tell you that the flesh doesn't go away if you don't think it's a bad and you watch yourself. Why do you think the word is a let him who stands and keep that seat? Yep. Lest he fall. Uh-huh. Let him who thinks he stands. Take heed lest he fall. That's why he said, watch and pray all the time. Right. That's right. You gotta watch and pray because the devil is conniving and he's sneaky. And before you realize, he done twisted you in a whole different direction. Right. You see, it's not always what you do. The words can come out of your mouth. Sometimes words can hurt more than a slap Sunday. Amen, somebody. Thank you, Lord. Life and death is in the power. Come on, somebody. And so what I want you to know is that when you surrender to God, he's able to keep you from doing evil. Not only is he able to keep you from evil people, but he'll keep you from being evil. Look at 1 Samuel chapter 25. In 1 Samuel chapter 25. I'm not going to read all of it. But in 1 Samuel chapter 25, David went and he sent word to Nabal. And he said, Nabal, I want you to send me something to eat for my troops. And Nabal was a scoundrel. And Nabal sent word to David and said, who is David? Who do he think he is? I'm not going to send anything to David. And the men went back and told David. And David mounted his horses. He said, let's go because the For 
he shall receive me. I want you to know today that you are rejoiced that God is able to keep you from the power of the grave. Don't you know that one day we're going to leave this place and God, I'm so glad that's not the end. Well, Pastor, I didn't know that's not the end.
God, that one that don't know you as their personal Savior. Reach down right now, God, and touch their hearts and their lives. Convince, convince, Lord. Rebuke everything that is not of God. And then they cry out to you and say, God, we give your name the glory for healing every sick right now, God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Amen.